This is the new Speedcross 6 from Salomon. And now if I'm honest, I've never been a big fan of this trail running shoe. Number one, because I find the heel offset to be a little bit too high for my liking. And when it comes to the grip of that rubber outsole, I have found it to be a little bit inconsistent when you're running on wet, rocky trails. Now, I haven't run in the Speedcross since the Speedcross 3. So that was quite a few years ago and there's been lots of updates since then. So when Salomon reached out to us and asked if we'd like to test and review the new version, I obviously jumped at the chance and today we are taking them out for their first run. Welcome back folks, I'm Lou Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Hope everybody is fit and well out there in YouTube world. If you've been enjoying the content that we're creating at the channel and you'd like to show your support, don't forget we've got some wicked merchandise available at runforadventure.uk, including organic tees, organic hoodies, and we've got some really cool multi-wrap designs on there as well. You can also uh, support us through our Patreon page for as little as two pounds a month. Not only is that a massive help to the channel, but it also opens up a world of run for adventure perks but let's get back to the shoe and let's break these down in a bit more detail the new speedcross 6 now retails in the uk for 130 pounds weight wise it comes in at 310 grams in a uk 9.5 and like i mentioned earlier we got quite a high heel offset of 10 mil so you get 32 mil under your heel and 22 mil under your forefoot if I flip the shoe over, you can see we've got a pretty aggressive 5mm multi-directional lug pattern on that outsole. And that's been designed to give you unparalleled levels of grip and traction on soft, loose, rugged, uneven surfaces. I must say the design of the Speedcross never really seems to change that much in my eyes, but uh, I think the reason Salomon do it is because they want to stay true to that original version of the shoe. It really was a massive trail running shoe for the brand. It was iconic and it's, it's the shoe that put Salomon on the trail running map. But they still claim that there has been some big changes made to the latest version. Starting off with the upper first and it now utilizes this anti-debris mesh. So we've got a real tight weave on that fabric. So hopefully it's gonna keep out any mud, any grit or any sand. Glad to say it is a ripstop fabric as well, so it should be nice and durable. And this hasn't always been the case with the Speedcross model. There has been models in the past that have broken down very quickly at the flex point of the toe. The tongue inside the shoe is just a standard tongue, really well padded. The same can be said about the ankle collar and the heel cup. And then Salomon have worked in some of that ripstop fabric across the midfoot there. So it's kind of giving you a sort of booty fit and design. We've also got multiple overlays starting at the heel, working down around the midfoot, around those lace eyelets and finishing up wrapping around the toe. They've been put in place to give you a nice precise sort of lockdown feel around your midfoot, but also to offer good levels of durability. If I I tap the toe yes we've got a substantial toe bumper in there as well to offer you good levels of protection when you're hitting the trails if you are new to the world of salomon trail running shoes then they don't come with your sort of conventional running shoe laces they come with what salomon calls their quick lace so it's this nylon cord system you just pull it down to your desired tension slide down that locking mechanism you're locked in place yes you've got all this lace uh, flapping around but salomon have thought about that so they've worked a little handy pocket into the tongue so that you can tuck that lace out of the way so that you're not going to snag it on anything while you're running and then to get out of your shoes literally pull that lace out of the pocket apply a little bit of pressure to the front plate and that will slide up to release you from the shoe so a very simple, straightforward, efficient way to get in and out of your shoes. And that is why Salomon call it the quick lace. The midsole is constructed from Salomon's Energy Cell Plus, And this is a high rebound compound, which Salomon claim offers high levels of energy return, substantial cushioning and durability. Really looking forward to test this out today because this is another area on the Speedcross where I've struggled in the past. And I found that the cushioning broke down quite quick and the shoe ran flat. And finishing up when it comes to that newly designed Contagrip rubber outsole. And like I mentioned before, it has got a very aggressive lug layout with a five mil depth. So it really does look like a bit of a mud tractor. And I think it's gonna handle really muddy, boggy conditions with ease. But it's gonna be interesting to see what the grip's like from that rubber when you're running in wet, rocky terrain. Because this has been an area where I've always struggled in the speed cross. But time is running out, guys. We wanna get out there before the sun goes down. So let's get these on our feet. Let's hit the trails and let's get running. 
Okay, we have made it up to Tahiti Woods now. If you haven't watched one of our first run first impressions videos, we do a lot of our shoe testing up here in the woods because it is a great testing ground. There's a big mix of different terrains and underfoot conditions. So like I said at home, we are sort of racing the sunlight. So it's just gone half past five. The sun is due to set at seven o'clock and I want to get a good seven miles in to give the shoe a proper testing. So without further ado, let's get running. to report that my legs are feeling back to normal now after the TDS. So I managed to get a bike ride in last week, which I was amazed how much sort of bike fitness I've lost, but great to be back out on the bikes with the lads, had a really good ride. And if you haven't seen it, our last first impressions review was on the Endorphin Speed 3. I managed to get out and actually do a park run and put in some effort. Managed to dip in just under 20 minutes in some pretty terrible conditions but it was wicked fun so if you haven't seen that first impressions review i'll leave a link in the description below now i'm only a mile into the run but the first thing i'm going to talk about is the midsole because getting into the woods you do have to run quite a lot of sort of gravel and hard standing and i know salomon say it's got that energy cell plus midsole for a high level of energy return and cushioning but it doesn't feel that cushioned under my forefoot that's for sure I know uh, cushion is all relative and I'm used to running in a lot of deeply cushioned shoes. So this actually feels quite minimal and I can feel a lot of the ground underfoot. Obviously early days on the run and we'll get on the soft stuff soon and I'm sure it'll be fine on there. But you know, when we go out for trail runs, we tend to cross over a big mixture of terrain and you'll always have some tarmac or some harder trails to run. And like I say, this feels pretty minimal on the cushion in front. Also be really interested to know guys, you can see I'm running in one of our Run for Adventure technical tees. Real high quality recycled fabrics, reflective detailing. We've been out of stock for a while and I've had quite a few people asking if we're gonna get more stock in. So it'd be really interesting to hear guys if you are interested in the Run for Adventure technical tee, we can get another pre-order going. So let us know if you are in the comments below. Sorry guys, I just realized the lens was really dirty. So if that earlier footage I took was terrible, I do apologize. Okay, so what, four miles in now. Super happy with how my legs are feeling. Had a day off yesterday, but around Monday and Tuesday, lots of rolling, lots of maintenance yesterday, and it's definitely paid off. Uh, let's talk about the fit. So. Salomon shoes tend to work really well for my foot shape, so I feel really well locked in, dialed in around that midfoot. I would say it is quite a narrow fitting shoe. So in the last few models, Salomon seemed to put a lot more volume in the toe box. I would say it's gone back to that narrow, quite pinching in toe box now. And if I show you the midfoot, you'll see what I mean. Extremely narrow at that midfoot. So if you've got any width in the midfoot, or in the toe, I would say this probably isn't a shoe for you, but I am running in the standard fit and I think they do do a width fit option. Also, not sure about this colorway. I mean, it looks cool. It looks cool in the pictures and online, but releasing a shoe, just coming into autumn, and it's a shoe for boggy, muddy conditions. Maybe white is not the best color option, but um, this is what they sent me, so this is what I'm running in. I'd have definitely picked a different colorway, but it's not gonna stay white for long, that's for sure. Okay, we are clinging onto the light just about. I'm trying to find some opening in the woods so we've got some light on the camera so you can actually see me. Uh, let's talk about grip. So, so far, so good with that new Contagrip outsole. I've run it on some greasy tarmac back there. It actually handled it really well. And that was one of the areas where the old speed crosses really struggled. We've been on some loose gravity trails, no problems at all, but we're just about to head in. I'll show you. We're gonna go into an area of the wood called 
oak wood. So we've got lots of sort of tricky steps. We've got lots of roots as well. And we've got some wooded bridges and some wooded boardwalk. So this is gonna be a real test for it because that wood's gonna be super greasy. Some of it has grip on it to make it safe. Other parts it's worn off and they're super slick and super greasy. So uh, let's see how the speed cross six gets on and I'll see you on the other side. Wish me luck. That was fine. It was fine on those wet tree roots. It was fine on the wet bridge and the walkway. No issues at all, no slipping. Felt really confident underfoot. But I still want to test that traction out and that grip on the Cornish Coast Path. You get lots of different types of rock out there. And when it's wet and greasy, in the old speed crosses, it was like playing rock roulette. <laughs> Some of the rock you'd stick to and then others would be like ice, so it made it super sketchy. So over the next few weeks, we're definitely going to be getting this shoe out on the coast path. But what, six miles down, we've got a mile to get back to the van. So let's head back and we'll see you guys back in the studio. So I'm happy to say we made it back before the sun went down and I was actually carrying a head torch with me just in case, but we got the run done in time. Another great run in the legs around to Hiddy Woods and it was good to be back in the Speedcross model. Although I must say it didn't feel like there was a lot of changes between the threes and the latest sixes, although they are a little bit muddier now. So let's jump in and I'm going to go through all the good stuff first. And the biggest standout for me has to be the fit and the comfort I got from that upper on my foot shape. I've always been a big fan of Salomon's quick lace system. I think it works really well with a trail shoe. It allows you to get just the right level of tension in that nylon lace. So you feel nice and locked down and held well around the midfoot. Uh, for me, just the right level of padding around the ankle, collar and the heel. So again, I felt well held in the back of the shoe and I had no slipping or sliding around or no medial or lateral movement within that upper. I just felt very connected to the shoe, which really helped when it came to stability on uneven ground. In true Salomon style, it is a very narrow fitting shoe, especially at the midfoot. You can see there, it pinches in very narrow and it also pinches in quite a lot in the toe box. No problem for me, you know, I've got quite a narrow foot shape, so that actually works really well, and it always has done in a Salomon shoe, but if you've got a wider foot shape, you might really struggle in the speed cross. Like I mentioned when we were running, this is the standard fit, and they do do a wider option, but for me, a really good fitting, comfortable upper. The outsole grip and traction was brilliant on those muddy trails and on that loose gravelly stuff. It felt like those aggressive five mil lugs were really digging in and supplying me with good levels of traction. So I felt very confident when it came to my footing. And the rubber outsole actually coat with those slippery wet wooden walkways pretty good. And you know, I felt pretty confident on them. And, and this is a very hard sort of surface for trail running shoe outsoles to grip on. And it has been an area in the past where the Speedcross model has really, really struggled. So I think there has been some subtle improvements made when it comes to that rubber outsole. So I'm very happy with the fit and comfort of the upper. And I do think there's been some subtle improvements made when it comes to the consistency of grip and traction from that outsole. Uh, although I really do want to give it a bit more of a thorough testing out on a longer run on a sort of wet, rocky section of the coast path. However, I do have my doubts when it comes to that energy cell plus midsole. Uh, Salomon used the words to describe it as high energy returning and substantial cushioning. And personally, I think that that description couldn't be any further from the truth, uh, especially under the forefoot. I can honestly say the midsole actually felt pretty minimal when it came to cushioning to the point where when I picked up some of those sections of sort of gravelly rocky trails with small stones, I could literally feel everyone pushing through that cushioning into the sole of my foot to the point where 
it was actually quite uncomfortable to run in. Now I know it's a soft ground shoe that's been designed to handle really muddy, boggy conditions, but I still think it should have a degree of cushioning in there to give you a bit of comfort if you do have to run a bit of tarmac or run on a rockier section. Also, if a brand is saying that their midsole compound is high energy returning, then I feel like it should return a bit of energy and I just didn't get that from the midsole. Now, I know midsole cushioning is a real personal thing and there's lots of runners out there who like quite minimal cushioning so they can feel super connected underfoot and it makes them feel very stable when they're running on uneven ground. For me, this is a little bit too minimal and I do like to have a slightly deeper level of cushioning under my forefoot, especially if I'm doing a long training run or I'm doing a longer race on a big mix of different terrains. I personally feel, for me, I would struggle to do any more than say 15 to 20 miles in the speed cross six, just judging on how that midsole cushioning felt on today's pretty short run of seven miles. I also feel that that 10 mil offset is still a bit high for me in the heel. Uh, to be fair, I didn't notice it as much as I did in some of the previous versions, but it did feel like it was tipping me forward too much and feel a bit too dominant. Not too bad on the flat stuff or running uphill, but I definitely noticed it when I was running down some steeper descents. Obviously, again, heel offset is a very personal thing and I spend a lot of my time running in four or six mil offsets, so a 10 does feel quite high but I'm really not convinced that we need a 10 mil heel drop on a trail running shoe. And I think this is one of the areas that Salomon should really look at when it comes to the Speedcross model, because I think it would run much better with a four to six mil drop. So definitely some pros and some cons out there today. And if I'm honest, the first run in the shoe has left me a little bit underwhelmed because again, the same thing with the Speedcross, it doesn't seem to have had many changes made to it. It just feels like all the previous versions and you know, that's obviously a great thing. If you've always run in them, you've really enjoyed it and loved the shoe, then I dare say you're gonna really get on with the Speedcross 6. But if you have tried some of them previous versions and you didn't enjoy the way the shoe performed or felt, then you're probably not gonna enjoy the way these feel either. I personally think it just feels a bit dated when it comes to the construction and the feel. What with everything that's going on in the running shoe industry, all these state-of-the-art fabric and materials, plated midsoles and high energy returning super responsive compounds, I just think it's been a little bit left behind and it's like the, the speed cross needs to be sort of dragged kicking and screaming into the 21st century. I much rather prefer the feel of the energy surge compound in the ultra glides. A very plush, comfortable ride, feels like it's giving you a little bit back and it performs really well on longer runs over a big mix of terrain. Now I know the speed cross is designed for a completely different style of running, soft ground running, but I actually prefer the feel of the S-Lab Cross 2 when it comes to that type of terrain. It's lighter, it's more nimble. I think the outsole has got a better level of grip and traction and the midsole is definitely more comfortable under the forefoot. So I'm not really sure where the speed cross sort of fits into Salomon's lineup anymore. And that's a real shame because without a doubt, it is definitely an iconic trail running shoe. But there it is folks, the new and updated Salomon Speed Cross 6 and our first impressions. It doesn't happen very often at the channel, but I'm not really sure how many more miles I'll run in this shoe. Uh, I will try and get a couple of longer runs in it and then hopefully we'll be back with a full in-depth review. But you know, I've got to be honest, I enjoyed my run today, but maybe I didn't enjoy the experience of running in these. So I'd love to hear from you guys. You know, if you've been a massive fan of this model of shoe for years, you've run in all the models and you're in the latest six, and you just really get on with it. I'd love to know what it is you like about this shoe. So get in the comments below and tell us all about it. We've just recently uploaded a video with my sort of winter running essentials. So I thought it was perfect timing with us heading into autumn and with those nights drawing in. So it might be worth a watch if you're worried about your running and training through those darker, wetter, colder months. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that video out. Uh, don't forget if you've enjoyed the video and you found it helpful to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But for now guys, thanks for watching and supporting. It really is appreciated. We'll be back here very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. I've found it a bit inconsistent on wet trails and that. I think it's because Salomon want to stay sort of true to that. Mic check, mic check, mic check. One, two, three.